One way to handle authentication in your Next.js app router application is to use the open source Next Auth library. It's coming out in version 5 pretty soon, so let's take a look at how to add that to a Next.js application right now. All right, I've started off with a stock Next.js app writer application. All I've done is specify that I want Tailwind, add Shad CN, and a button, and then change the home page just to simply read home page. So now let's go and add Next Auth to our application. Now we're here in our VS Code. I'm going to bring up the terminal, stop the app, and I'm going to add Next Auth of beta. Now, just to make sure, I'm going to keep this repo up to date with all the things as I put it onto GitHub and give it to you. I'm going to say that I want the latest next and the beta auth. And that's going to give us version 5 of next auth currently. All right, let's install that. Next thing we're going to do is configure auth. So I'm going to put our auth stuff in a new file at the top level of source called auth. It's actually a, a directory. And then inside that, index.ts, that'll mean that I can do at slash auth anywhere and get access to this. Now inside that file, I'm going to import next auth. I'm going to bring in the configuration specification, and I'm going to create auth options, which is our next auth configuration. I haven't listed any providers yet. We'll get to that in a second. I'm going to list a base path for it. So I'm going to put everything on slash API slash auth. I think by default, it's slash auth, but I'm going to put it on API auth so I can show you to put it wherever you want. So I'm going to export that as a constant because we use it in other places, and I'll also go and specify it as the base path in our configuration. I'll need a secret. We'll get to that soon. But at the end, we're going to call this next auth function. That next auth function is going to take that options configuration and give us back handlers. We use that to handle the API. It's going to give us an auth function. We're going to use that in a lot of different places. That's going to give us our session. Then it's going to give us two functions, sign in and sign out, that we'll use for sign in and sign out. So let's deal with the next auth secret. Let's go back into our outline and then create a new file for the environment. So .env, .development.local is what I use. And let's specify that we have a next auth secret, but how are we going to create it? Let's go back over to our terminal and we'll use an open SSL command to create a random base64 string. So on my Mac, I'm going to use open SSL and then I'm going to route that through PB copy. PB copy just means that I want to put it in the paste buffer. I'm going to just paste it into here, and that's what that random string looks like. Now that all set up, let's go back into our configuration. And now we want to go set up any kind of providers. Now, I would normally show off something like GitHub here, and that is one of the many providers that you can use. If you go back over here to the next off site, you can see the full list of providers on the left-hand side there, and it is <laughs> massive. But we're not going to use any of those. We're just going to use some local credentials and an email password. So to do that, I'm going to bring in the credentials provider. And then down in this provider section, I'm going to add that as one of the potential providers. So I'm specifying the name of the provider's credentials, and also that the credentials that we're talking about are the username and the password. You can specify whatever set of credentials you want, which is really cool. Next up, we have to specify a callback, in this case, authorize. And it will give us the credentials that the person's entered, and then we get to check it against whatever source we want to check it against. We're just going to go and create a local list of users. Those users will have an ID, a username, a name, a password, and an email. I'll just create two of them, test user one and test user two. And in both cases, the username is going to be like test one and then pass. Next up, I'll use a simple array find to just find the user that has that password. And then I'll either return ID, name, and email, or I'll return null. Now we've got our provider all set up. Next thing we need to do is deal with API auth. API auth are the API route endpoints that are going to be called when you sign in and sign out and all that good stuff. So we'll go over to into source, into app, and then create a new set of directories called API, and then auth. That's where I decided to put it, but you can put it in auth if you like. Then we're going to create an XJS catch-all route. That means we're going to put in bracket dot 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 next auth. That's going to take anything that's after the API auth and put it into a parameter called next auth. We're going to add on route.ts. In there, I'm simply going to import the handlers from auth and then export them as get and post. It's that easy. Now let's hit save. And now let's go and bring up the app because we should be able to log in. So we're back on localhost 3000. And now we'll just directly go to slash API auth, sign in. There we go. Now we've got our form. Let's give our username, test1, password is pass. And there we go. We are logged in, I guess. 
Let's go back to the home page. And now, what do we do to go and see if we're logged in? Well, we need to get the session in an RSC. So that's the first thing we're going to do is go and get the session in a React server component. So let's go into our home page. And right at the top here, we're going to bring in auth from at slash auth. With that, we can simply await auth. But we're not an async function. So let's make this an async function. So now we've got our session. And down below home page, let's just go and JSON stringify that session and see what we got. All right, looks like we're signed in. That's awesome. Now let's go to API sign out. Let's sign out. We'll go back to home, and we can see that session is null. How easy is that? Well, it's not particularly easy for the user, so let's go make a nice button that folks can use to log in and log out. So back over in our auth code, I'm going to go and add a new directory for some helper server actions. We'll call that helpers.ts. And we'll bring in sign in and sign out. Those are created over in our index. At the bottom here, as we called next auth, we got sign in and sign out. We're going to import those as na sign in, na sign out for next auth. And then we're going to wrap those in server actions, sign in and sign out. So that's going to turn them into server actions that we can call from the client. Now let's go create our auth button. And we're going to create this in two pieces. So in the app directory, I'm going to create the client version of the auth button. So I'm going to call that auth button dot client dot tsx. This is a convention I've been seeing more and more of lately where you've got a component, say auth button, and you've got two different files associated with it. You've got auth button dot server dot tsx that has the server part of the component that's going to go act on the server side. And then you've got the corresponding auth button dot client dot tsx that handles the client side of everything. It's just a nice way to indicate that you really can't use one without the other. So we're going to work on the client side first. So we'll create auth button dot client dot tsx. We'll bring in the sign in and sign out server actions that we just created over in auth helpers. We'll also bring in use session. We've got to connect that to session provider. That's going to be over in our auth button server. We'll bring in the shad cn button, and then we'll use those in our auth button implementation. Right over the top here, we'll use the use session hook to get our session. And then we'll just switch based on whether we have a session or not. If we have a session, then the button will be for sign out. If we don't have a session, then the button would be for sign in. Now let's go create the server version of this. So we'll create the auth button dot server dot tsx. First of all, we'll bring in that session provider that's going to drive the use session in our client component. Then we'll bring in base path and auth. Auth is going to allow us to get that session. And of course, we'll bring in our button client. In the React server component button code, we're going to await that auth that's going to give us our session. And then we're going to do something interesting. We're going to take a look at that session. We're going to see if we have a user. And if we have a user, then we're going to trim that record down to just the fields that are safe on the client. So in this case, it'd be name and email. We don't want to leak anything else out to the client that might be compromising. Down in the JSX, we're simply going to invoke that session provider. We're going to give it our base path to override the default one. And then we're going to give it our session. And then we're going to invoke our auth button client. OK, let's go over to our home and actually use this. All right, we are signed out. So let's sign in. We'll sign in as test2 this time. And there we go. So easy. Now let's sign out. And yeah, it's great. We do get that. But I do want us to go to the sign in page if I sign out. So I'm going to just go and tweak that a little bit. Go over to the client over here. And after a sign out, I will just Ask for a sign in. Super easy. Let's give that a try. So I'll sign in, sign out, and that looks great. Now, currently, this home page works in both authenticated and unauthenticated modes. But what happens if you have a sub route that you want to make sure is always authenticated before you hit it? Let me show you how to do that. So we'll create a new route with an app. We'll call it test route. Of course, we'll create a page.tsx file. Then, then inside of that, I'll create a simple test route that just gives us our username using auth. So I can just navigate to that. And now we've got our test route. And of course, I'm authenticated. So I see that I've got test2 there. What happens if I sign out? If I go back to test route, I can still access it. So let's go add some middleware. And that middleware will ensure that if I try and hit test route directly, it'll make sure that I'm authenticated. And if I'm not authenticated, it'll send me right to the sign in. To do that, I'm going to go over my source directory and create a new file called middleware.ts. And I'll define some middleware. So I'm going to bring in auth and base path from that auth that we created. I'm going to define when the middleware actually fires by exporting a config. That's a Next.js thing. The config gives a matcher. And it says, if you match this, then fire the middleware. 
It's a little interesting in this case. We're actually going to do the inverse. We're going to say if it's anything other than API, next static, next image, or the fav icon, then go and use the middleware. Inside the middleware, we're going to look at the request. We're going to see what the URL is. Next, we're going to go and see if we are authorized. If we're not authorized and we're not looking at slash, then we're going to want to send them to the sign in page. So we format a new URL with the base pass, so that's API auth, then sign in, and then the callback URL, which is going to be where to go after we actually sign in. All right, let's give it a try. So go back over here, and we're automatically already to our sign in, but let's give it a try anyway. So let's do test route. And boom, we're back at sign in. We can see that we've got a callback URL. Let's go and log in. And now we're not only logged in, we're also on our test route. Now let's take a look at authenticating different ways that a client can call back to the server. We'll start with server actions. So over in our test route file, I'll create a new server action inside of here called on get user action. It's a server action because it's defined as an asynchronous function and it's got use server as a pragma in it. All it's gonna do is go and get our auth and then give us back our username. So let's create a client component that will invoke that server action. I'll call it who am I server action. And all this component is going to do is take that server action as a prop, it's then going to invoke that function inside of a use effect on mount and store whatever comes out of it in state and then display that state. All right, let's go bring it into our page of TSX and invoke it. Of course, we need that action on there, so let's go and add that user action as a prop. And let's have a look. And there we go. Now, of course, that on get user user action could be defined here or it could be defined over in another file like we did with sign in and sign out. Totally up to you. Another way that we talk to the server is through API routes. Let's go and create an authenticated API route. So we're an API. I'll create a who am I API route by doing who am I and then route.ts. And then into that, I'll bring our handy auth function. In this case, I'm going to export a new git. That git is going to be defined by wrapping an async function, which is the body of our git, in auth. And auth is then going to pass us as one of the parameters auth. So we'll get our auth, and then we'll pick out of there the name and return it as JSON. So if I were to hit this right now, just out of the browser, you see that we get back a JSON object with our username. All right, let's go back to our app and try it out from the client. I'm going to create a new component called Who Am I API. This is going to do exactly the same behavior as the server action version, except that instead of going to the server action, it's going to instead call API Who Am I. Let's bring that into our page and then invoke that. I said save and now refresh, and that looks great. If you're wondering why we don't actually have to bust the cache on this, because normally a get on a get route would be cached by Next.js, the reason is that our implementation of get in this case, because it's using auth, is hitting up the request. And whenever you hit up the request inside of a get endpoint, it's going to not cache the results of that. So one last scenario here with the QMI API client here, we're doing it on the client. What if we want to have a React server component that also makes an authenticated request back to itself? How do we do that? Let's go over in our test route and create one last one, who am I RSC? And in there, we're going to create a React server component. We're going to call back to localhost 3000 with who am I? The secret sauce here is that we're going to pass along the headers from the client request that we got in. We're going to get that with next headers. And so that's going to give us our authentication information proxied through. So let's try that on our page. And that works just fine. So let's go have a look at that. I'm not actually a huge fan of doing this specific thing, calling back to myself. I think if you need to get the information that's in API Who Am I, you should just do that directly. And if you have a function that's invoked on the API side, you should just invoke that exact same function inside the RFC. But if you have a case where you want to take those same credentials and call back to, say, a microservice behind you, this is a good pattern for that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at how to bring in Next Auth 5 into your app router application. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. The code, as always, is linked in the description. While you're in the description, click on that pronextjs.dev link. That'll take you to my Pro Next.js course. If you sign up for the email list, you'll get two free tutorials, one on state management and one on forms management. I'm working hard on that Pro Next.js course every day, and I can't wait to bring it to you really soon.
In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.